Welcome to the Rooted in Health and Wellness podcast with your hosts, Heather Harris and Stacy Richards. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 013. And if you are watching on, uh, us on YouTube, thanks for joining us there. And you can probably, if you are watching us, see that Stacy is not with me today. It will be a solo episode. Uh, Stacy is actually headed out to Myrtle Beach, flying out today from Myrtle Beach. And so she was super busy. And um, so it's just going to be me today. I hope, though, that you have been able to um, check out our last podcast, which was 012, which was also up on YouTube channel, our YouTube channel. And um, that was where we talked a lot about exercise and the benefits of exercise. And I hope you also got to check out our first exercise video where we were going through a strength training exercise called glute bridges and we did a mobility exercise for the hips as well. So I would like to be posting more. I just, I think, I, one, Stacy's so busy and it's really hard for me as well um, to find the time to post more. So hopefully we'll be having either a podcast or an exercise video coming up once a week. So I do hope that you tune in and make sure that you're subscribed to the podcast and to the YouTube channel that you really uh, hit that notifications bell, especially on YouTube. That way it will notify you anytime there is a new um, video up. And I really hope that you like the videos, that give us a thumbs up. That will really help us out a lot. Um, again, there's so much learning through all this. I mean, even today when I was getting set up for this um, podcast and now that I'm videotaping it as well, there's a lot of setup. There was way, there's way more behind the scenes than I even realized. Um, and so I'm hoping too that our sound will be better on this video. We'll see. I got another uh, microphone that I've now hooked up to my phone where I'm doing the video. And so hopefully that will help. Um, I also want to make a comment about, I've had people say, like if they're watching, that it's kind of hard for them to maybe see my face or what I'm saying because of my, I'm so close to the microphone, but you kind of have to do that in order to get good sound on the podcast. So in front of me, I have a screen here where I'm recording and I can see my voice being recorded and how wide it is. The wider, the better. So if it's really narrow, that means that the, the volume isn't that or the sound isn't going to be as good. So if I pull farther away from here, and you can probably hear the difference too when you're listening, as far as when I'm up here, the sound is going to be much better. So I apologize if that's distracting or difficult for anybody watching, um, but it's going to, at the end, like I said, at the end, sound better. All these things that I'm learning, it's definitely, I've said it before and I'll say it again, it's definitely been getting me out of my comfort zone, especially now doing these videos as well. So... As I mentioned before, we talked in the last podcast, um, 012, about the benefits of exercise, and especially we talked a lot about strength training. I am partial to strength training. I'm just going to say that right now, but I want to make sure to say that find an exercise, a routine, movement, you know, whatever that looks like, find what's going to work for you. Uh, don't think you have to do what I like to do or what Stacy likes to do. Do what you find enjoyable because at the end of the day, if you're not enjoying it, then you're probably going to be less likely to do it, right? So I would definitely find what you enjoy. I'm partial to weightlifting just because I know the benefits of it. I've felt the benefits of it and I know the research behind it. And I think it's super important as we get older, like we talked about before, just not being frail. Um, you know, as we get older, falls and fractures, hip fractures and everything are so much more prevalent. And so I just want to be as strong as possible, you know, in my later years. And I have two young kids. I have two boys, nine and 14. And so I'm trying to keep up with them all the time. And so I want to, again, stay strong, stay flexible, you know, keep my heart strong and my endurance, you know, strong so that I can keep up with them. And then I can be around for a long time. So when they get older and they have kids and stuff, so I, I will be able you know, be there for them 
that's my why. And that again goes back to several podcasts ago where we talked about knowing your why, why you're doing all of this. You have to know that. And that's something that I talk about with people on a daily basis is what is your why for doing these things? Because I feel like if you don't know that or if you don't really have a reason, then you're probably gonna be less likely to stick with something, be consistent and be successful with it. Um, I was just talking to a client yesterday about, you know, she was so focused on a number on the scale. And I've really found that when people focus on that number on the scale, they're less likely to be successful as if they just focus on their health and whatever that looks like for them, getting stronger in the gym like we've been talking about, you know, just making, getting nutrient dense foods into their body, whether it means, you know, working on their sleep, um, doing meditation, you know, or just getting out and walking in nature and stuff to help with stress. Those kind of things, focusing on health, focusing on where's my body out of balance, Okay, and I look at everybody's lab work when they come to see me. Where are things out of balance? And how can we get your body back into balance? And that tends to, when we focus on all those things, those health parameters, instead of a number on a scale, I find that people are more successful and they're able to then lose the weight more naturally because we're just trying to, again, get their body back into in in to, to balance, into homeostasis. So. I, like I said, I love lifting weights. I love, but again, find what's going to work for you as far as exercise goes. It's just like when people come to meet with me, I don't make their goals for them. I think goals, like we've talked about in previous podcasts, and I encourage you to always go back and listen to those because all these podcasts kind of build upon each other. But I don't make the goals for someone else because if I did that, like, you know, they don't have they've got to make their own goals because I want them to have buy-in into those goals. You know, they've got to be the ones that are carrying them out. You know, I can't be with people 24-7 to watch everything that they're putting into their mouth. And so they have to make goals that, again, are going. they're going to be able to, to do, to follow through with and to sustain. Um, so they, because they, again, are the ones that are carrying them out few points that I want to point out before you know moving on and talking more about exercise is that I, I was thinking about this about reasons that people don't probably see progress um, or the results that they want a lot of times and one of that is kind of what we just talked about is not having a clear goal um, without clear goals again and, and really defined and knowing your why and all of those things again it's hard to see the results that you want. Having unrealistic expectations, so that would be number two. Not having a clear goal is one. Unrealistic expectations is number two. Something I was talking about with the client yesterday, she had this number again on the scale that she has been literally trying to reach for years because some doctor told her that she needed to be at that weight. And it's really, it was really kind of crazy to me. It was really, again, this almost unrealistic expectation. And not to say that someone isn't going to lose, you know, a lot of weight, but it's, it's almost setting yourself up for success because she's been struggling to get down to this number for years. And, you know, really driving herself crazy and almost becoming an, an obsession. And I think that happens too with social media. We can look on social media and see these people that we think, you know, what whatever, you know, we have is this ideal body and we can think that we have to be this size or this weight or we have to look like a certain way. And again, everybody's different. And so we want to make sure we're not comparing ourselves to others and just being the best version of ourselves that we can be and doing what's going to be best for our body. So Number one, not having a clear goal. Number two, unrealistic expectations. And number three, a big one, is inconsistency. If you're not seeing progress or results, it's a lot of times because people are not consistent. Again, I just spoke with my client about this yesterday. It, uh, consistency is everything. I mean, she admitted that 
you know, she would do things for a few weeks and then something would happen and she would fall off. I get like life throws us curveballs all the time and we may not be able to keep up our exercise routine or, you know, meal planning or making healthy meals all of the time. But one of the things that I stress in what I do is learning to do those things no matter what life throws at you. Um, because life is always going to throw things at you. There's always going to be ups and downs in life. I mean, that's the truth. And so it's, it's, it's being able to stay on track, take care of yourself so that you can then take care of you know, other people. And during those stressful times, during those difficult times, you're able to, you're still taking care of yourself good and you're still feeling good. And that way, again, you're more apt to be able to deal with the stress or whatever is going on. You're gonna be better able to deal with it because you're feeling good and your health is good. So consistency is, I mean, I say it all the time and you're probably gonna hear it a lot. And it's again, sometimes I feel like what I'm talking about is boring and it's not sexy and because it isn't a quick fix or, you know, it's not, I'm not saying like, oh, just take this supplement or, you know, do this one exercise and it's going to, you know, make everything better because that's just the reality is that there isn't just one thing, you know, there is, there's most of the time it's multiple things. And as I've said before, it's hard, it's difficult, but we, we should be trying to do hard things. Again, I've, I've talked about this in previous podcasts as well. You know, all the podcasts I really feel like are going to tie in together. But I, we, we've gotten complacent, I think, in a lot of times. And I'm not talking about everybody and, and everything. But we get complacent and we, things, be, you know, with technology and, and everything, we, it becomes easier. And so when we have to struggle with something, when we find that something's difficult to do and to follow through, you know, we tend to back away from it or shy away from it and not, and not keep working at it and keep trying to move forward. And I'm just saying consistency is your friend that if you can stick with something, even when it's hard, even when you don't feel like doing it, even when you're not motivated because motivation is fleeting. I don't think, I don't even like that anymore. I don't, if you wait all the time till you're motivated to do something, you're probably never going to do it. Um, and you're, or you're not going to be consistent with it because maybe one day you're motivated, but then you're not the next day. It's, it's more about, again, doing something every day because you know that it's, it's good for you, it's healthy, and that you know that in the long term, it's going to provide results, especially, again, in your health. So again, we are talking about reasons that you don't see progress or results. We've talked about not having a clear goal, unrealistic expectations, inconsistency, and then the fourth one is neglecting proper nutrition and recovery. And we'll talk more about this in depth in other podcasts. Obviously, nutrition is a huge part of this, and it's a huge part of what I do. Um, and so you want to make sure that you're eating properly and recovery, and that means rest and sleep is super important. And I have so many people coming to me who are not sleeping much at all or sleeping well through the night. And that's when, again, our body heals and recovers. And so how are we expected to feel well and to want to go exercise and to, you know, to want to do anything when we're tired and we're not getting enough sleep? The last reason, though, that we don't see progress or results we want is just real, is kind of what I alluded to before, is you're relying on motivation. And again, motivation is fleeting. It's not going to be, you're not going to be motivated to do something every day. I'm not motivated to get up, but, and I've said this before, I get up early and exercise every morning, and I am absolutely not motivated to do it every day. There are days I just want to pull the covers over my head and go back to sleep, but I know that once I get up and I get going and I get to the gym, the minute I walk into the gym, I can't explain it, and I've said this kind of before, but 
I'm like a different person. I just, the music, the people, you know, I, I just get inspired by watching other people lifting and lifting heavy. And, you know, I put my headphones on and I just, you know, I go to work and I love it. And it's hard sometimes for me to even leave because I love being there in that atmosphere and, and just, you know, working hard. And I really, something else I want to say really quickly here too, is I feel like gyms sometimes, you know, people are scared of them or they're scared of what others are going to think. And I understand that I do, um, having just gotten back into the gym a few, you know, a couple months ago now, after just working out at home for a while, I understand that. But I also want to say, and I think sometimes gyms get a bad rap, but I feel like, at least at my gym, and I've been to several other gyms that I feel are this way too, I feel like it's one of the most encouraging, supportive, inspiring places that you could be. I feel like if you're worried that like what someone's going to think, I actually think it's just the opposite. I feel like people are so accepting and and talk about like supportive and, and trying to motivate you and stuff. I. I have gotten nothing but people, you know, just talking to me and, and, you know, asking different questions and, you know, like, great job and like, oh man, that was, you know, you were really lifting a heavy weight there. And I feel like, again, when people see other people just there working on themselves, because that's at the end of the day, we're all there working on ourselves. We all have a goal of, you know, probably getting healthier and getting stronger. And so... I just feel like, again, everybody's just kind of encouraged by that and, and just cheering, you know, others on. And I think I just, I, I love that atmosphere. And I think sometimes it gets a bad rap. And again, people are afraid of what others are going to think when really they're thinking good for you. You're here, you're working on yourself. That's awesome. So I, I again, I want to encourage you to take that step um, and, you know, join a gym maybe. Again, you can, if not, work out at home. Um, you know, keep watching for our YouTube channel so that, you know, we're going to continue to put out some exercise videos. We're starting off, like I said, with short ones, just one exercise, one strength, and then one mobility exercise that you can do at home um, and that don't, you know, doesn't require a lot of equipment. Um, and just to get you started, you have to start somewhere. And no more excuses. I'm just gonna call out everybody right now. Like, just stop with the excuses because we can all find excuses. I mean, you know, I'm a single mom of two kids. I'm working, you know, it's I'm busy too. I get it. Um, but, and I, I, could, I could find every excuse in the book, you know, to not, to not work out or to not do something. Figure it out, you know, find the time that's gonna work for you. Maybe it's not first thing in the morning like myself. You know, if that doesn't work for you again, figure out what's going to work for you. Maybe you start off with, you know, our simple exercises and you're doing just five or ten minutes. Make that time. I think we all, you know, I know sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish there were more hours in the day. And we probably all feel that way. But I also think that if we really analyzed our day, that there's times when we're finding ourselves scrolling our phones, you know, and, and sometimes people are scrolling their phones for a lot, a lot of time, you know, or we're running through the drive through at Starbucks to get a coffee or, you know, whatever that is. But I, I have a feeling there's more time that you could find that, you know, you could, you could um, implement some of these exercises again that we're showing on our YouTube channel. Again, even if you're watching TV and you want to do your exercises while you're watching TV, well, great. That's, you know, that's better than just sitting on the couch. Um, so find that time that you can, you can, um, that you can add in that exercise. I just want to recap again, the reasons why you might not be seeing progress or results is not having a clear goal. Number one, number two, unrealistic expectations. Number three, inconsistency. Number four, neglecting proper nutrition and recovery. And then number five, you're relying on motivation. Remember, make a plan. Make a plan and then, you know, stick with it. Be consistent on it. Again, even on the days when you don't feel like doing it. 
You've got to do what works for you. We just want to help you to get started. We want to help you get started. And maybe, again, you just start with walking 10 minutes a day. Maybe you just do that. And then you add another 10 minutes. And then maybe you add some mobility work, you know, and you just slowly amp it up. Make small goals. Make small goals that, again, that you know that you can, you know, be successful with. Because the more that you do that, the more that's going to pump you up. And, you know, okay, I've done the 10 minutes a day. Well, now I can add, you know, another 10 minutes and walk 20 minutes. Um, keep trying to, you know, add on to that. And make it work for you and your schedule, okay? But don't, don't again, make excuses. Find the time that's going to work for you. Don't try to go from nothing to six days a week either. You know, if you're not currently working out, I'll say to people, you know, I'll talk to people about that, like, you know, how many days do you think you can commit to working out? And they've not been doing it at all. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, I could probably do four or five. And I'm like, let's start with one. <laughs> let's just start with one day. Again, set yourself up for success. Don't set yourself up for failure. You know, if you're saying, oh, I'm going to work out four or five days a week and you've gone from zero to four or five days and then all of a sudden you don't do that, you're going to feel like, oh, I can't do this, you know? Instead, say, I'm going to just do one day and be consistent with that for a while. And then once you've got that one day, then you add another and then another, you know, and just keep building upon that. Start small, make that habit, and then add a little bit more. Focus on your successes and not your failures. No one's perfect. No one is perfect. So just because maybe you aren't exercising for 60 you know, minutes a day, for six days a week, doesn't mean that you are failing. That's, that's not at all. It's okay. It is okay to start off with 10 minutes one day. That's perfectly fine. Just start. Just start moving your body. Start somewhere. Um, it's, you don't have to do, you know, actually don't have to do 60 minutes, you know, every day of work. If you build up to that, excellent, you know, but you don't have to start there. And it isn't about comparing yourself to what I'm doing again or to what Stacy's doing. And that, again, we're not here to tell you like, oh, you need to do what we're doing. That's not it at all. Again, you have to find what works best for you. Don't try to do what someone on social media is doing either. Again, you know, not comparing yourself. Do what works for you. Just make that plan and then, you know, just stick with it. Find a time when you can fit it in. You know, and maybe do those things that are going to set yourself up for success. You know, maybe it's getting a new workout outfit, you know, something that you feel good in, that you feel comfortable in and makes you feel good. That's a lot of times motivation for people to, you know, go to the gym then because they've got this new, you know, outfit and that makes them feel good. So maybe you do that. Do those things like we've talked about before though. Set your clothes out. Set your workout clothes out, you know, the night before if you're going to get up in the morning or whenever you're going to exercise. But set those clothes out. Have everything ready so that, again, it just makes it really easy for you to uh, jump into them and go work out. And maybe... Like I said, maybe you hire a trainer. A lot of people need that accountability, and that's okay. Again, if that is, if that you know, paying that money and hiring someone is is helpful for you, you know, then that's a way to go. You can again check us out or just find a trainer at a gym, and um, again, really vet them out. You know, check out what their experience is, what their background is, and make sure again they're going to be right for you. And then there's also lots of YouTube videos, though, that you can do a lot of exercise videos out there now for free and including ours. Um, so I encourage you, like I said, to keep checking out our YouTube channel and keep starting to implement those exercises into your day. So as much, I want to talk now again about, about uh, exercise. And, and we talked a lot on the last um, episode, a lot about strength training and weight training. And as much as I love them, I do think it's still important to keep our cardiovascular health, our cardiovascular system healthy. And doing something like what's called LIS, low intensity, steady state exercise, or even throwing in once in a while a HIT workout, which is high intensity interval training. Um, both can be very beneficial. Now, Again, this is generalized information. I'm not here to prevent, to cure, you know, to diagnose anybody. Um, this is generalized information. HIT 
may not be what you need right now, that high intensity interval training. It may not be if you're exhausted all the time and your adrenals are, you know, uh, pump or uh, fatigued, then maybe that high intensity interval training is just too much on your body. So again, you have to find what works for you. But if you've been really sedentary and you're really trying to lose weight, high intensity interval training thrown in there like once or twice a week might be something good for you. But the list, the low intensity steady state cardio, that is like walking, okay? Absolutely beneficial. Walking does not get enough love. And it is so beneficial to just, again, get out, walk, you know, you can obviously walk on a treadmill, but getting outside in nature is even, you know, better if you can. Um, it is so helpful just to keep your body, you know, more fluid and, and just moving. And it's really helpful for stress. And it really is good as, as well for fat loss. So it doesn't, again, get enough love and it's really beneficial. And walking is kind of one of those zone two exercises. And I wanna talk about what it means, what zone two exercise means. So zone two refers to a specific heart rate zone that is commonly used in endurance training. It's also known as the aerobic zone or the fat burning zone. So zone two represents a moderate intensity level of exercise that allows your body to primarily utilize fat as a fuel source while improving cardiovascular fitness. So zone two is basically if you're able to exercise or work out and still be able to talk and hold on a conversation, that basically means you're in that zone two um, of exercise in that heart rate zone. The heart rate range, so zone two exercise typically corresponds to a heart rate range of about 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. So if you're looking to determine your target heart rate for zone two, all you have to do is subtract your age from 220. So you take 220 minus your age and that, and then you calculate 60 to 70% of that value. So whatever that number was, that 220 minus your age, whatever that number is, you then take 60 to 70% of that value. And that would be the heart rate range, the target heart rate range for zone two for you. And, you know, so if you have like a heart rate monitor, um, that can be, you know, helpful. But that's kind of basically how they come up with zone two. It, zone two exercise predominantly engages the aerobic energy system, which relies on oxygen to produce energy for the muscles. This intensity allows your body to sustain exercise for longer durations as it efficiently uses oxygen and fat for fuel. So again, you're able to talk when you're doing this so you're still a, be able to hold on a, hold a conversation uh, and fat burning in zone two the body tends to primarily utilize stored body fat as a fuel source that this makes it an attractive intensity level for those aiming to burn fat and manage weight however it's important to note that total calorie burn is typically higher at higher exercise intensities even though the relative co contribution of fat may be lower so you know, you may typically burn more calories in a higher intensity like HIIT training, but when you're in that zone two, it is still where you're gonna be utilizing stored body fat. So again, again, why it's important to get out there and get your steps and get walking. Zone two exercise is commonly used in endurance training programs to build a strong aerobic base and improve cardiovascular fitness. By performing sustained exercise in this zone, you can enhance your body's ability to transport and utilize oxygen, which is beneficial for long duration activities like running, cycling, or swimming are good examples of that. Recovery and active recovery. Zone two exercise is also used as a recovery or active recovery strategy after intense workouts or during rest days. It promotes blood flow, aids in muscle recovery, and supports the removal of metabolic waste products. So I tend to always walk or like walk in an incline or something after I've done strength training in two because it does kind of help um, after an intense workout to help with recovery and kind of getting rid of that lactic acid that could build up and cause you to be sore the next day or two. Zone two exercise should feel comfortable and sustainable, allowing you to maintain a conversation, like I mentioned before, without excessive breathlessness. It's characterized by a steady, moderate intensity that can be sustained for extended periods, such as long during long distance training sessions, like we talked about before. 
So, and then the heart rate ranges and perceived effort in zone two, zone two excuse me, can vary between individuals based on factors like fitness level, age, and overall health. It's important to consider personal capabilities and consult with a fitness professional for guidance on determining the appropriate heart rate range for your specific needs. Again, so everybody's going to be different depending on their fitness level, their age, you know, and their overall health of what is going to work for them and what's going to be their heart rate zone, their target heart rate zone for that. But I do encourage you that again, just goes and, and is talking about, I encourage you to get out and walk even. And, and that's a great place to start. Again, it's, uh, it's underrated and it's super helpful. If you just, you know, start off walking, that will also help burn, you know, or for fat loss. The other thing I wanna talk about is functional exercises or functional movement. I love functional exercises and functional movement. And that basically means we're referring to movements and activities that mimic real life. Okay, everyday tasks and involve multiple muscle groups working together. Functional movements can aim to improve overall strength, balance, coordination, and mobility with the goal of enhancing the ability to perform daily activities and movements more efficiently. So, you know, a perfect example of a functional exercise is a squat, and we'll be doing an exercise video on squats. And, you know, we get up and down out of a chair. We sit up and down out of a chair all the time. So squatting is very much a functional movement. You know, we want to be able to, you know, pull ourselves up. And so pull-ups is a functional movement. We want to be able to, you know, push, pushing movements like push-ups are a functional movement. Um, we want to be able to, again, just lift bags and lift things. So those are all functional movements. Anything that we can do to strengthen what we're you know, what our everyday movements are is considered a functional movement and super important and I always incorporate into training with my clients. Um, you know, and, and specifically too, like if you are, let's say you're a golfer, you know, doing more things for the core and that's gonna help your swing and it's again functional, that those, that would be super important to incorporate. So again, everybody's different and what, what they need to work on is going to be different and individualized. Um, but I love functional exercises for that, like squats, lunges, deadlifts, push-ups, pull-ups, um, step-ups, you know, we want to step upstairs, so doing kind of step-ups to strengthen your legs and your hips and your quads, hamstrings, glutes, all of those muscles is super important. Um, so I love, like I said, to incorporate functional movements and I encourage you when you are building your program or building your workout that you also include some of those functional movements. And again, if you're struggling with those, watch some videos. We're going to be putting out videos on those different exercises. So watch that or look up some YouTube videos um, or hire a trainer so that they can help you and make sure again that your form is, is correct. You want to make sure you have really good strong form so that you don't get yourself injured. Another, another principle or another thing that I want to talk about is called progressive overload. And when you are building a exercise program and you're doing exercise training, you want to kind of build this progressive overload in. And in, what that means is it involves gradually increasing the demands placed on your body over time. So you're, it, it refers to systematically and progressively challenging your muscles. You're always trying to kind of challenge your muscles. Now, there's a point where, you know, you're probably only going to be able to lift a certain amount of weight. You know, it's hard to, you know, for every, depending on, again, your body, you may only be able to get to a certain weight, you know, um, and, and then you may not be able to progress on that. You can only, you know, do so much. But when you're starting off, this is, you know, really beneficial that, you know, you may start off with five pound weights, you know, for an exercise. And you may do that, you know, for a few weeks and then all of a sudden you find yourself going to eight pounds and then eventually 10 pounds and then 12 pounds. That's kind of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about progressive overload. It's challenging, it's constantly kind of challenging those muscles, the cardiovascular system as well. And it's always trying to make improvements in strength and endurance and your overall fitness. The concept is based on the idea that your body to adapt and continue, continuing to make progress, it needs to be consistently exposed to increasing levels of stress or stimulus. That to me again is huge, is that I feel like everybody's so stressed out all the time 
that, you know, it's, it's hard when you sometimes can challenge your body with lifting weights and trying to increase levels of stress that for some people that again, doesn't work because that will make them more fatigued, more tired, um, and maybe, you know, feel worse. Um, because we're just, everybody's so stressed out these days. So working on stress first so that eventually you can continually challenge your muscles, can challenge your body, and that way then your body be able, is, is better able to adapt to stress over time. The more we challenge it, the better our body can adapt to it. Hopefully that made sense. So you can, you can do progressive overload a different, you know, many ways. You can increase the resistance, the weight, like we talked about, going from five to pounds to eight pounds to ten pounds, or you can just increase and uh, the repetitions or the sets. So how many repetitions? Maybe you start off with, you know, um, uh, five to eight reps, you know, and that's all you're able to do of an exercise, and then you do ten to fifteen reps, or you know, twelve to fifteen. Um, or you start off with two sets and then you go to three sets and maybe four sets of the exercise. Um, and, and, you know, also what I would say is that, you know, if you're starting to get up into a 15 rep range of something, well, then it's time to increase the weight. So there's all these different ways that you can induce progressive overload on your body. Again, by the weight, by the repetitions, by the sets, or you can increase your intensity or effort. It's just by, you can achieve by reducing your rest periods between sets. So sometimes you'll see people do an exercise and then they'll rest for, you know, a minute or two or more. So maybe you inc you decrease that time of rest in between sets so that you're not giving your body as much rest and you're kind of keeping, you know, keep moving. You can perform exercises at a faster pace. You can increase your range of motion in the exercise or just perform more challenging variations of exercise, which you can do as well. Advancement in exercise complexity. As you become more proficient in certain exercises, you can progress to more challenging variations or movements that target the same muscle groups. So that kind of talks about, you know, what it said in the last one, performing more challenging variations of exercises. So for example, if you're starting with an assisted pull-up, you gradually, you know, progress to an unassisted pull-up. Um, and so that's, another way to do this progressive overload. There's frequency of training too. So increasing the frequency of your workout, such as going from three training sessions per week to four training sessions per week, can also to contribute to progressive overload. But it's important to ensure, always wanna make sure that you're getting enough rest and recovery so that you avoid overtraining and injury as well. So in cardiovascular exercise, progressive overload, overload can be achieved by gradually increasing the duration of your workout, the intensity of your workout, or frequency, again, of your workouts. For example, if you're increasing your running distance or your speed or adding incline to your treadmill, can all be ways that you can progressive overload during cardio, okay? So that kind of talks about wanting to constantly challenge your muscle or challenge your body, challenge your muscles by increasing your resistance, increasing your reps or sets, increasing the intensity or the effort, or increasing the exercise complexity, making, you know, something that was maybe, you know, easier or more modified exercise, you can make it more difficult. And then the frequency of training. And as I said before, just always making sure that you are getting enough rest and recovery and, and so that you, you, know, you don't get injured. An overall sound exercise program, guys. And I know that this is going to be like, I don't have time to do that. But an overall sound exercise should include, exercise program should include an aerobic component, a strength training or weight training pro, um, component, core work. You wanna always get that, you know, strengthen that core mobility or flexibility work, and then balance work. So those, that aerobic, strength training, core work, mobility and flexibility, and balance, those are kind of five really key components of a good exercise program. Now, are you gonna be able to do those every single day? Probably not, I can't either. I don't have time to maybe get all of those in my workout every day. I try, um, you know, I, it can be done. You know, if, you, if you're doing an hour in the gym, you can do a little bit of each. Um, and sometimes they can be done together, you know, a couple things can be done together, but um, I, 
it, it may not be you know feasible for everybody and so I don't want you to beat yourself up about that if you can't do all five of those components in one exercise routine maybe you just try to spread it out through the week and you work on you know the for this day, I'm going to work on my strength training. I'm going to do a little bit of strength training. This day, I'm going to work, you know, just get out and do some lists, some low intensity steady state cardio for my heart. You know, another day, I'm going to just maybe hold a plank and work on my core. Another day, I'm going to work on my mobility and flexibility. I can throw that in, you know. And then another day, I'm just going to work on balance, you know, and just standing on one foot. There's this old man, it's called the old man exercise, and it's where you stand on one foot. You balance on one foot and and then one I'll, I'll, I'll do a video on it but the other foot so let's say you're balancing on your left foot and then you lift your right foot up and you're trying to put your socks and shoes on and tie them while you're balancing all while you're balancing I I, uh, I challenge you to do it it's it's not easy and stuff but that's a great way and an easy way we put on socks and shoes like all the time it's a great way to work on that balance and throw that in there and make it fun as well I do that with my kids and we get a good laugh about that. So if you don't have a lot of time though, um, I, one of the things I want to encourage you to do is focus on like more compound movements. And compound movements just means that you're working more than one muscle group or joint, okay? So a squat, for example, you are bending at your ankles, your knees, your hips. You're working more than one muscle group in that. You're working, you know, your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings. I mean, there's a lot working there. Your core should be working, you know, as hard as well. So if you don't have a lot of time working on those compound movements as opposed to like a more of an isolation exercise. So an isolation exercise would be like when you're only moving, you know, only really working one, um, one muscle group or one joint is moving and that's like a bicep curl. Um, and, you know, it's fine to throw those in. I'm not saying that that's, you know, bad to do. But if you don't have a lot of time, focus on those exercises, they're gonna work more muscle groups at once. You're gonna get more bang for your buck. So doing squats, doing the lower body, especially because you're working those bigger muscles, you're gonna, again, get more bang for your buck. Um, so I would really encourage that if you don't, you know, you don't have a time, just maybe you focus on squats, deadlifts, push-ups, pull-ups, something like that, again, where you're working a lot of muscles at one time. Just, I, I wanna wrap up here for today and encourage you again to make a plan. Just make a plan. You know, reach out if you need help. Ask questions. You're more than welcome, you know, to text me, to email me, and just ask questions too. Um, but get a plan in place, you know. Really think about your goals, think about your why. Um, and do find something that you're going to enjoy doing and that you're going to stick to and be consistent with. Um, again, if you need help, let us know. Um, you've got this, guys. You can do this. We can do hard things. So I, again, encourage you and I want to say thank you again for being here today for this podcast. Um, thank you so much for your support. And I really, um, I hope that you share our podcast, our YouTube channel with anybody that you think could benefit. We really appreciate it. It really helps us out a lot when you give that a thumbs up, when you subscribe, and when you share with others. Again, that helps us out a lot. So thank you so much for listening. And until next time, bye.